Hello and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone is doing well. Today I have four Reddit stories for you. All credit goes to the original posters and I will link their stories in the description. First one is called Disappearance. My wife went missing five years ago. On a rainy day, I came home from work and almost got into a car crash. I guess the other driver thought the road would be less slippery than it really was. I ended up dodging the other car, and we both went our ways without a scratch. When I got home to tell my wonderful wife how close of a call it had been, she was nowhere to be seen. I thought she might have gone out for a walk or something, but my text went unanswered, unread even. I got increasingly worried as time flew by. She'd never been gone this long before. I tried calling her a hundred times, maybe, but it all went straight to voicemail. I'm not usually an insecure person, and I wouldn't normally get this worked up, but at this point, it had been two days since her disappearance. Two days turned to five days, then to nine, to twenty-three, and forty-six. She never came back, and the days kept going. I wouldn't know what day or time it is by now, if it wasn't for my phone calendar, keeping me updated, I have barely been able to care for myself since I came home so long ago now, so long ago. I keep meaning to call the police or our family, our friends, anyone or anything, but every time I try to, I end up ringing my wife again. I don't know how. After five years, I finally gathered the strength and courage to exit the house. How I wish I hadn't. Maybe I could have waited for her at home. She would have come back. Of course, she would have. I don't know how or why I ended up here. Quite a sinister ambience settled upon me the second I set foot into the cemetery. It's like my feet had a mind of their own. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't controlling anything. It's only as I got closer to the tombstones and started reading the names that I realized that I hadn't seen another human face for as long as I could remember, actually. My lips were trembling. I had tears carving ditches down my cheeks, and my eyes were so blurred by the water escaping from them that by the time my feet stopped in front of a tombstone, I basically blind. I felt nauseous and lightheaded before I started reading the name on it. I knew it, deep down, that this stone would somehow have my wife's name carved into it, and I was right. Only partly, though, it read this. Miss, devoted wife and cherished friend, leaves behind a loving husband, Mr. and her friends. 199X. Mr. Devoted husband and friend for, to many, leaves behind a loving wife, Miss, and his friends. 199X to 201X. I guess I didn't dodge the other car after all. A Halloween that felt a bit too real. The month was October. The day before Halloween was a busy one. I worked at a grocery store, so it was always busy with parents buying decorations and costumes. At the store I work at, we have a Halloween area in which we showcase all of our decorations with things like remote control spiders, electric zombies, etc. On this Hallow Eve, I was working the night shift, and as I was about to close up for the night, I hear a kid scream in the workers-only section, so I walked in and shouted, Hello, kid. Are you okay? No answer, so I said it again. Hello, kid. Are you okay? Still no answer, so I walked out thinking one of the decorations must be set on a timer. In there, I turned the power off and was about to lock the doors when I see a light on the far corner of the store. I look over my shoulder, sighing, and heading over to the light. But as soon as I got there, it turned off, and I heard a child's laughter. Another one turned on. All right, kid, you got your Halloween prankin'. Go home. But the light stayed and flickered. I walked over to it. It shut off. And the one above the back room turned on. I head towards the door, hesitantly turning the handle. But nothing's there. I hear something fall inside and flick on my flashlight, scanning it around the room. There was a tall pile of stuffed animals. I left my light linger there a little longer. Felt like something was off. I look closer and hear something slam in the main store. 
Listen, kid, it's time to go home. I saw a light illuminating from the clothing section. Walking over, I saw someone had tipped over the sketchers and that turned them on. I felt breathing on my neck and footsteps run behind me. I spun around and heard child's laughter. Or I had enough and walked to the door, locking it behind me, but I shined my flashlight into the store to see if the kid was there. I did see a child, but it wasn't normal. His arms and legs twisted abnormally. I was about to shine my light over him when my car alarm went off. I turned around to see a crow had has fell out of the sky onto my car. I looked at it closer. The eyes were gouged out and his wing torn to shreds. What the hell? I turned round to the store and the kid was staring at me, pointing at me and smirking. I never went back. Scary experience I had on a date. I recently had a scary experience during a date, I went on. I had already went on one date with this guy and he seemed fine. Then so when he asked me out again, I agreed. But for some reason, it felt different the second I stepped into his car. Every time he touched me, like our arms accidentally touching when walking together, I felt so disgusted and had this weird anxious feeling that I don't have often the entire time and it only got worse throughout the date. Towards the end, when we went to a restaurant after going to the theater, it was so bad. I felt sick to my stomach and couldn't look at him. He didn't do anything for me to feel that way, but I couldn't help but feel it. It was so intense, I started having cold sweats and there were moments when I thought I was going to have to run to the bathroom to puke. I didn't have a ride home or extra cash, so he had to drop me home and the feeling didn't leave when we were in the car. Then out of nowhere, when we were close to the area I live, he asked me with a dead look on his face, do you want to have sex with me? And in that moment, I felt so scared, a chill that felt like shocks went through my body and I was sure he was going to rape me. I was ready to jump out of the moving car. I tried to be calm and said, what? And he repeated what he said exactly, the same look on his face. I felt like I was going to puke and I tried to act like it didn't bother me. And he should ask me and he should ask me that on at least the third or fourth date. Obviously, no, you should not ask someone that at all. And no, I was not planning to ever talk to him again after this, but I was trying to make him think he had a chance and I was OK with what he did. So he didn't try to hurt me. He laughed it off and agreed. Asked me more sexual questions that I can't remember, then dropped me home. No, he doesn't know where I live. I had him drop me a few blocks away from my house. I honestly feel traumatized and will not be going on any dates anytime soon. Late Night Hospital Shift I work at a hospital second shift very late nights. Most of the time, it's been half a year since I started. There has only been a handful of times I have been startled or felt uncomfortable, but tonight, tonight was different. Maybe I had a psychological break, or maybe I saw a glimpse of something beyond our world. The night was dragging by second break and had already come and gone. It was around 2 a.m. and a whole other floor to mop. I just got done with this section, had to mop this area called Old Carido. I didn't mind going in there too much by myself, but there was rumors among the co-workers it was haunted. I just had a strange feeling that night while I was walking in there, all of the rumors racing through my mind. One always stuck with me, though. It made the hair on my body act just like a soldier standing up straight and tall. She told me she was in there one night, and it got really cold. Then the air got heavy. She tried to just not give it any attention, but she was walking up up to this office. The door slammed shut. She froze in fear, and before she could think, a blood-curdling scream from what sounded like a woman came from the room, and she booked it after that, and she refuses to go in there. The weird thing is multiple people have heard screams from old Carido. I couldn't help myself, but that's all I could think about. I put the pedal to the metal. I was going as fast as I could mop. I definitely did not feel alone. Dripping with sweat, I'm towards the end. I start mopping this nursing station and a cold breeze ran down my back. I instantly stopped in my track. There is a room right beside the station and I began to hear this ear screeching noise like a nail on a chalkboard coming from this room. I start walking towards it with my ears covered. The sound grew louder and louder the closer I got. Just as I put my hand to the door handle, it stops. I hesitated before I opened the door. I got too scared and began to gather my cleaning supplies 
as I'm doing so the lights shut off and the only bit of light that bled through the darkness were the exit lights. My flight or fight has kicked in at this point. I started walking towards the exit without my supplies. This hallway couldn't be longer. Just as I get to the lobby, door is slammed in my face. Scared to the core, I take off running to the bathroom on the other side. As I'm running, I slip and fall. The damn floor is wet. As I'm getting up, I hear what sounds like branches being snapped, completely paralyzed with fear. I look towards the sound, and there is this woman covered in this black-like substance crawling on all fours every movement came with the ear-numbing sound of what i imagine are her bones breaking and snapping she looks up at me and stops to stare at me releasing this soul crushing scream this woman's face was half caved in with the substance leaking out leaking out of this dent in her skull her flesh gray and dead most of her flesh were hanging off of her the eyes were pitch black. I will never forget that face. I close my eyes and cover my eyes, waiting for her to take me, but minutes pass by. I open them, and she is gone, and all the light are on. The, are on. Needless to say, I booked it and no longer work there. All of that pain and suffering in that scream is burned into my brain. Thank you for listening. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing and liking my channel, and I will see you on the next one.